Good evening, everyone. From framing and surveillance accusations to racist and vulgar text messages, Glenn Cassidy's days as Speaker of the House are now numbered. Following an overwhelming no confidence vote from his own party, the third most powerful man in Tennessee politics agreed today to step down from his leadership position. News Channel 5's Chris Conti joins us to break down what happens next. And Chris, this really is unprecedented. It is uncharted political territory for Tennessee, Carrie. But for Glenn Cassidy's decision to step down today as House Speaker today wasn't enough for some of some in his party. A number of his colleagues want him gone from the Capitol completely. Yeah, come around, come around. The chorus of voices calling for Glenn Cassidy to step down this week. Resign Cassidy, okay, on three. Could not have been any louder. Resign Cassidy! We deserve better. Tennessee deserves better. The signs that the House Speaker had lost support were clear. And yet his decision to give up that title today still didn't silence those uncertainties. You still would encourage him to resign completely? Yes. Since the scandal first broke, David Hawk has called on Glenn Cassidy to resign. Why did you turn on him so quickly? Because I knew the truth. Uh, I knew exactly what was going on, what had happened. Yesterday, inside a downtown Nashville hotel, I took notes. He was feverishly scribbling notes during a secret caucus meeting. When he talked about how the how the media hates us as a collective. Hawk says the meeting was fairly civil. Cassida would directly respond to colleagues about accusations of sending lewd texts and trying to cover the whole thing up. Did you resign? But just stepping down as speaker isn't enough for him. Will it be hard for your party to heal and move forward? It will be a challenge with him still being a presence in the legislature. Um, there are some wounds that have been opened that only him leaving will close. As for what's next, my goal would be to settle everything down and get back to normal. Representative Bill Dunn will play a critical role. He will temporarily assume the position as House Speaker, but still wants to call a special session in the next few months to find a replacement. I think we need to have a, a vote to make something permanent. That will settle everything down. Cassidy's political scandal may be settling, but there are still plenty of voices left to quiet. Glenn Cassidy told his party today he would meet with them when he gets back from vacation on June 3rd. Republicans would like to hold that special session by the end of the month to choose a permanent successor. 19 days ago, chief investigative reporter Phil Williams first broke this story. Tonight, he takes us inside the investigation that has pushed, pushed Cassidy out as speaker. In the end, it probably wasn't just one thing that led to Cassidy's downfall. It was the inappropriate text messages, but it was also the cover up and perhaps a leadership style that made his short tenure as speaker one of the rockiest in years. Madam Speaker, there's 75 votes for Glenn Cassidy. Ever since Glenn Cassidy's election as House Speaker back in January. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you, Jeff. His refusal to meet with critics had fueled protests. Among them, activists fighting for racial justice, including the removal of the bust of Confederate General Nathan Bedford Forrest from the state capitol. <laughs> and women upset over his appointment of Representative David Byrd to chair an education subcommittee despite 30-year-old allegations that he sexually assaulted three teenage girls. Hey, Mr. Speaker, can, can we talk to you about... I'm late for a meeting. The Speaker's office also ignored our questions about an email with what appeared to be an altered date that had been given to Nashville's DA in an apparent attempt to get activist Justin Jones locked up for violating a court order to have no contact with Cassida. I know nothing of that. How did that happen? I do not I know nothing. I know nothing of that. Nothing. We also uncovered racist text messages sent by Cassidy's chief of staff, Kate Cothran, one using the N-word, another saying black people are idiots. How can you defend that? Does that say something about your attitude toward African Americans? One of them sent to Cassidy himself. It kind of verifies in my mind there's something not right about that story. The speaker went on the attack, taking to talk radio to accuse News Channel 5 of using fabricated text messages. Did someone feed Phil Williams false uh, text messages that were not real? That well, were, that's what um, I was going to ask you about. Where did, where did he get these text messages from? You know, it's, it's easily done. 
Cassidy did not know was that New Channel 5 investigates had even more evidence, including a selfie that Catherine had taken describing his use of illegal drugs. There were also vulgar text messages between Catherine and Cassidy about women and a secret recording of a phone call that the speaker made to a person he suspected of leaking the text messages. Well, I wish it sounds like you might have, might have released something. Um, so, it's always the cover-up that's worse. Talk radio host Phil Valentine was done. But I'm expecting honest answers. I'm not expecting somebody to use me to spin his story and spin his web. Come on, enough of the shilly-shallying around and half answers. Democrats called for Cassidy to step down, as did the state's Republican lieutenant governor. If I was in that deep water, I think, I think I'd just go home. And I feel very strongly that the, the major, overwhelming majority is still with me. We also uncovered evidence that Cassida had put political operative Michael Latvey on the state payroll, paying him $48,000 a year with no requirement that he actually put in a full work week. If you're getting a full-time salary and you're getting benefits, you should show up full-time. And a lot of times in the General Assembly, that's long hours. One of Latvi's jobs we discovered was helping the speaker draft messages attacking the women who had accused Representative Byrd of sexual assault. One of them was Christy Rice. You know, they were using state dollars to attack me. So where's their, where's their morality? You think that is immoral? Yes, absolutely. I'm sorry, this is, this is a legal office and we can't have you here. But, but this is the House Ethics Committee. No, this, this is a meeting between uh, attorneys and, and the um, deputy speaker. A prominent Republican also accused Cassida of trying to manipulate the House Ethics Committee into issuing a report that cleared him of any wrongdoing. Shame! 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 All of that led to the unprecedented meeting of the House Republican Caucus to consider the speaker's fate. Behind closed doors, he pleaded for his job. A vote of no confidence. Instead, he got a resounding vote of no confidence. I think what changed today is that you now know how a majority of the members of the Republican caucus feel about the allegations that have been made. Speaker, what did you tell the caucus? Forgive did you resign? Did you resign? Did you resign? Within hours of his quick exit from the meeting, Cassidy lost the support of virtually every other Republican leader in the state. By this point, the handwriting was on the wall. Another potential factor, the fear of the unknown. After the first stories, Cassida assured his colleagues there were no more to come. Now, no one knows what to expect next. Phil Williams, News Channel 5 Investigate.